So, um, for this part, I want to talk about um, the way we represent our configuration data. So by, by configuration data, it's a bit of a vague term, but I, I really mean the JSON files that we use uh, for most of our resources, except like textures and sounds and stuff like that. Um, this is represented by the class dynamic config value. And this is, this class has like a ton of methods uh, for like checking the type of the data and like uh, lots and lots of methods, uh, iterating over it and so on. But basically what it is, it stores the data with a type tag that tells us what kind of data we have in this object. And then it's the data itself, uh, which is a union. It can be a number, a boolean, or it can be a map of data. Um, this map is a map of dynamic effect config values, so, uh, or a vector of such data, or just an array of shards which we use for strings or other, other binary data. So this is basically just our representation of a JSON object, like a, a JSON table, the way we represent it. Uh, the reason uh, you might wonder why we have two separate unions here, one for the number and the bool, and one for the the other stuff. Uh, the reason is that uh, even if even if the data if the data is a number or a boolean, we still need to keep track of the allocator because since this is a mutable a representation of JSON data, someone might change this thing to a to an array like the the, the object that this particular key or at this index might be changed to an array, and then we need to be able to allocate that array, and we don't want to have the user to pass in the allocator in order to do that. Um, so, uh, and if we have a map or a vector or an array, it's fine because the allocator is already in, the map already has the allocator in it, so we can just ask it what the allocator is. But we, if we have a number or a boolean, we need to keep track of the allocator, or nil, we need to keep track of the allocator separately so we can, can use it to construct, uh, construct data. Um, yeah, a ton of functions for 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 querying this uh, this object and querying the the data. Uh, to parse a JSON file, we have a file called parse simplified JSON .h, which has a single parse function like this. You pass in a buffer. A buffer is just a pointer with a length, and then you pass in a dynamic config value, and that value will get. Uh, the content of this buffer, that tree. And we actually, as I said before, we have our own simplified format of JSON where you don't need to have put commas everywhere. You don't need to quote your, your map keys unless they contain special characters. You can use the equal sign instead of the colon, uh, a bit stuff like that. Uh, but this parser is compatible with both. So it doesn't matter if if what you pass in is regular JSON or, or our own simplified format, this, this parser can, can parse both into a dynamic config value. So the way you typically would use it in your code, uh, which is typically would be in your compiler function where you compile data, is something like this. Uh, you have a temp allocator, usually use a temp allocator for compiling data since you're throwing it away later. You have a dynamic config value, that represents this JSON tree, and you call the parse function, it returns an error. If there's an error, you propagate it, otherwise you start using it. And you typically use the data with code that looks something like this, where you access a key in, the, in this JSON object, and then a subkey of that key, and then you use uh, the OR operator. And the OR operator in this case will, uh, uh, if this, if this key exists and is a number, that will be returned. Otherwise, you will get this. So this is sort of the default value. So this is the easiest way to, to parse JSON data. Then, as you saw, there are a lot of other functions in, in that interface, but, but this is kind of the easiest one. Um, I want to say something about keeping track of line numbers. When, if there's an error somewhere in the JSON file, we want to be able to print the good error message. And uh, 
So if there is an error here, for example, if settings course is not an integer or if there's some other issue, we want to be able to print an error uh, in a nice way, uh, including the line number. But that means that we, uh, we need to keep track of the line number somehow. And we have actually a special function for doing that in this uh, parse simplified. There's one, there's a function called parse, parse traced. And that will, uh, will parse Parse, uh, parse this file using uh, and keep track of uh, the position when it's parsing and will also return an error state which contains this is something we can pass around to functions that, uh, that, that parse this later so that we can keep track of the file name and keep track of the source buffer uh, but the the line, the sort of location information, is encoded in the dynamic config value. So if we go back and look at the structure, uh, we see that in addition to the type field here, there, uh, which encodes the type, there is also some extra bits that we can use. And we, this has sort of been optimized to, to use as little memory as possible, since we're, we're be, going to be creating a lot of these objects. Every, every node in the tree becomes a dynamic config value, so be quite a lot of them. Uh, so the tag field here is just some some bits where we can store whatever and the dynamic config value doesn't really care what we store uh, but the parser if we call this parse trace will store uh, the location within the buffer sort of the offset in the buffer uh, of this uh, item of this particular node in the tree and then we can use a, a location function uh, where we pass in the node and we parse in the buffer and it will give us back the line and the column. So it will basically just look through the buffer and, and count lines and columns uh, until it gets to the offset of this particular node. So that's how we, how we get um, line reporting. There's, in addition to dynamic config value, we have another way of representing uh, configuring data called const config. And uh, that's, as the name implies, it's like a dynamic config value, but it's constant and you can't change it. And the reason, the reason we have this is for compiling data. So most of the times when we compile data, we just turn it into C structs because what we want to end up with uh, in the end is, is a binary blob, as I talked about previous, binary blob with just the data that we need in memory. But there are some times where we, where we, want, we want data that is not like locked down into a C-struct, but it's kind of in an open format. It can uh, represent whatever. For example, in units, uh, we have this script data, which can, which can be whatever. Sometimes we just want to preserve the data to be in this JSON format, to not compile it down into, into specific C-structs. Um, that's what this class is used for. We don't want to use a dynamic config value for that because, as you said, the dynamic config value is a huge tree with uh, maps that points to other dynamic config values, which can be arrays that point to others. So if we were to serialize that, it would be like tons of pointer patching and so on. Uh, so instead, we use this uh, const config value, which just packs the data into a memory block. And as you can see here, it refers to everything through offsets instead of pointers so that we don't have to do any pointer patching, we can just use the serialized data directly in memory and sort of walk that, that structure in memory. Uh, so, uh, we also have functions for generating JSON. We have two functions actually. We can either generate proper JSON, which we use when we want to interop with programs that, that don't use our simplified JSON format, uh, or we have a function for generating uh, our simplified format. And these functions are super simple. They just take a dynamic config value that represents the JSON structure, and they serialize it out to a string stream, and then there has some formatting flag, how you want to format it, uh, like where you want line breaks and so on. Uh, so those functions are really super simple. One important thing to note is, is that our simplified JSON format 
will not survive a round trip through these through this sort of parse function and the generation functions. Uh, we don't we don't try to preserve the exact content of the file. So, for example, keys keys in a map. Uh, we don't preserve the original order in the file. We will output them in another order when we serialize out. Uh, we also have comments. You can have comments in our simplified JSON files, um, which is used when, when the files are handwritten, but as some of the render files are. And those comments are not represented in the dynamic config value. We don't have like comment nodes in our structure. So, so these comments, if you, if you go through the parse and generate, these comments will also be obliterated. Usually not a big deal. I mean, we, we don't use this uh, that much for that kind of stuff, but it's something that's useful to know. So I would say that there are some issues with the way the, the configuration is implemented right now, uh, especially the parsing. When we parse this, we get this tree structure where we have a lot of object creation. We have these maps and arrays, and, and this is especially use, can be especially problematic when we use a temp allocator, uh, which, which you typically do in most compile routines just because it's simple and you don't have to think about it. Uh, but that can be problematic because we're regenerating and copying a lot of objects. And as we saw earlier when I talked about our allocators, the temp allocator doesn't actually free anything. Uh, which means that when you, if you parse a big file, and some of our files can be pretty huge, like some of the um, animation files are like several megabytes, like four megabytes or something of JSON data. And when you, when you parse that using a temp allocator, it, could, it can generate like hundreds of megabytes of, of temporary memory, which is kind of a problem. But I think the way we deal with that in the code right now is that, well, for certain files, some of our JSON files, if they are like big ones, we use a regular allocator instead of the temp allocator. But for the small ones, we use the temp allocator, which is kind of arbitrary, but, but it, it works. But, but the thing is really that for these files, we, we don't really need a dynamic representation because we're just parsing the file into memory. We're not manipulating uh, the JSON structure in any way. So one thing we might want to look into doing is instead of instead of doing this we might want to use something that is closer to our const config so instead of parsing it into this dynamic structure that can be manipulated we just should just parse it into a, a constant memory structure that we could query and then it could use could be much more efficient in in the way it uses memory but uh, this might not be super important so it might not be the the refactor we should really focus on to begin with because uh, this mostly happens during compiling, it doesn't happen uh, in the runtime and in, in the compile time we usually have a lot of performance. We don't worry as much about burning performance uh, during compile time. Uh, this, it, when compiles are slow it's usually other things that, that cause compiles being slow and, and things like this. But it's something that we might consider for the future. And that's really all I had to say about our configuration files. Any questions on that? Uh, I have a quick one about... Um, I was a bit surprised when I saw that the, every con dynamic configure value has can have its own allocator, right? Uh, do, do you think it's, it, it's, it's a random thought, right? That, what thought of having some kind of context, let's say, you know, that often correspond to a file and everything that is um, allocated inside the context of this file is just using the same allocator? Yeah, you could, you could do that. Um, you could sort of only have the allocator in the root um, of, of, the, of the sort of tree and then uh, keep, keep that around. It's, some things become a bit more complicated than whenever you wanted to, if you wanted to just assign a string to an entry, then you would have to supply the root somehow. I mean, you could have a pointer to the root, but then, you're, then you might as, as well have a pointer to the allocator if you, if you have it inside the dynamic config value. So, so that means like you couldn't 
if, if you did that, you couldn't do like, like we do now. You can take the dynamic config value and you say, oh, the settings should be, uh, should be blah, blah. Because, because now, since we don't have the allocator here in this, in this object, uh, we don't know what we should use to allocate this string. So then you would have to rather do something like DCV settings uh, set um, DCV context, which would be like the context for this, or DCV root or whatever, which is context for this parsing, which would have the information like the allocator, stuff like that, and then do like that. So it's, yeah, it's just a matter of like, do you care about having this nice syntax? I'm kind of, I'm kind of, I'm kind of, I used to be more into syntax like this before, like, oh, it's so nice having operators. And now I'm kind of more of leaning towards, well, it's kind of nice. Everything is a function that's kind of easier to understand than, than all this operator stuff. So yeah, uh, maybe, yeah, we can discuss whether it would make sense to rewrite it like this. It depends on what syntax you like. Cool. Anything else? All right. Let's talk to you tomorrow again. Cheers. Cheers, bye. Okay, thanks a lot.